Yang Hao Pu, who is a chief investment strategist for uh, Asia Pacific region at uh, UBS Wealth Management, is joining us now. Yang Hao is bullish on emerging market equities, especially China, India, and Indonesia. Clearly, he doesn't buy the double dip scenario, and we are going to ask him why. Emerging markets, he says, will benefit from an absence of sovereign debt related worries. Strong earnings growth and reasonable valuations. Well, that's Young House prognosis, and uh, let's talk to him about about his prognosis then. Uh, well, Young House, first of all, thank you so very much for uh, joining us this morning. Taking valuations first. Good morning. Now you. you can buy the Hang Seng China Enterprise Index at uh, at a at a at a forward PE of 12. You can buy. Uh, China, mainland China, uh, CSI 300, if you will, for 14. But if you come to India, you'll have to pay 17 times forward earnings for Sensex. So Indian equities are not all that cheap, are they? <laughs> You're right. Uh, Indian equities, relatively speaking, is a little bit more pricey. But uh, if you look at India per se, I think India is the least exposed to the to the external demand such as Europe or, or U.S. At the same time, so India's economic recovery is much more organic or, or more sustainable, while the other Asian countries such as China probably the growth was induced uh, due, uh, by the government stimulus. So when the stimulus start to winding winding down, obviously people were concerned whether or not the growth is sustainable or not. Of course, we are confident that China's economic growth will be sustainable, but on the that side, I think India does have an advantage. Even, let's say, that the, on, the, on the PE basis, the Indian equity looks a little bit pricey uh, compared with the other uh, or rest part of the region. Well, I think uh, we, in general, we like uh, India, obviously, because the India have a, a very strong domestic components and the under-leveraged the consumer finance. We do see a lot of potential in those areas. Obviously, uh, we, we just advise our clients to look at India as a whole. Let's say we buy certain uh, uh, instruments or funds which have uh, overall exposure to the India rather than specifically to select the sector and so on. Yes, I mean, in my view, the risk for emerging market has a couple of fold. Of course, on the economic side, we see potential inflation. I mean, India, in typical case, have uh, suffered extremely high inflation. India's WPI is close to uh, over 10%. Hopefully, we're going to get a nice monsoon season so the food price can gradually trend down so the RBI doesn't have to raise interest rates so aggressively. I believe the RBI probably is a little bit behind the curve. Uh, uh, in the other countries like China, I think uh, uh, the PBOC, the central bank, has been aggressively tightening. That's why the Chinese stock market has been underperforming compared with other peers, including Indian. The reason is because authority has been aggressively tightening, also exiting from the uh, stimulus pack uh, policies. That's why we see that the emerging market probably first number one risk is not deflation, but it's on the inflation side. Authority need to act on upon that and then need to make sure that the, we don't see enormous of the asset bubble, inflation, or a, a, a strong capital inflow which are causing the uh, asset bubble. So these are the number of risks obviously the emerging market have to tackle with. And uh, I strongly believe that the emerging market is fundamentally in good shape. I mean, if you look at the public finance, if you look at the trade, if you look at the banking sector, we, we are all in good shape. Only, only sort of the area we have to concern about, have to be a bit of concern, is the potential inflation. Of course, the external demand we're going to uh, see much slower in the coming years because Europe and the U.S. is going to face fiscal consolidation, cutting spending. Consumers in the West have to deleverage. All these are going to bring a lot of headwinds to the emerging market. That's why emerging market have to rely on uh, its own domestic demand to get the economic growing. And um, obviously, India has a lot of advantage because India's uh, ex external exposure are probably least compared to the rest part of Asia. Well, I mean, the current account deficit is the issue for India, but it's natural because India is still in the early stage of the building the infrastructure and attract the foreign investment. So 
Uh, it's very similar to the China uh, 20 years ago. China at that time was running a huge uh, or, or a decent amount of the trade deficit because that time China needs to import lots of equipment to build the infrastructure and so on. That's natural. But if you can see, if you look at the capital account, which obviously can help cushion the current account deficit. So in a way, if the Indians still have a lots of a growth potential, it attracts lots of the capital inflow, which can offset this kind of the uh, in, on the balance payment side. So in that sense, I'm not too worried, and I don't think Indians consumers are extremely overly leveraged. Uh, in Asia, probably consumer leverage is a bit low in the Indian, and, uh, and the banking sector are relatively in a good shape. Of course, the public finance, I think uh, Indian probably have to take a look and uh, make sure that the, the fiscal deficit is gradually sort of under control and uh, it's not going to explode. I think this is probably area India have to address.